Hey y'all, it's Diane with Y'all Craft One and my old barn door. And I'm back with the little golden book. We're going to decorate it. So I know you guys have been asking for this video. So here we are. So I have, um, I don't know if you guys can see, but I have a few things picked out that I think I might want to use in the book. So we're just going to go in and get started. I think I'm going to leave this. Um, because I'm afraid if I take it off, it's going to, I know it's going to rip the, the cover. Um, so I'm going to leave this for whoever um, gets the book, um, for them to decorate it like they want. Because I don't know if they want to leave this open or what. So I'm just going to leave that and they can decorate it um, whatever, whatever way they want to do it. So I have some ideas of just um, things for a couple of pockets. So we'll just get started with that first. And um, you guys can just uh, watch and craft along as I play. Okay, so I want a pocket here. Or maybe a tuck. Let me see. I have these cute little um, cutoffs from the, um, the envelope, the children's book page envelopes that I just made. So, but I don't think they're going to go with the pink. So we're going to wait on those. Um, and I do want a pocket here, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking that one's too pink to go with this pink. Let's do something to give it a little something else. Maybe this one. Yeah, I like this one. I'm just going to trim it off a little bit because it's a little bit too long. if that fixed it. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and glue it down. Sorry, I hope y'all can see. I wasn't even paying attention to the camera. And I have a couple of different types of pockets that I want to put in here. And then some things that I want to put into the pockets. So what I usually do is I like to go through and put my pockets in first. And then I like to go back through and fill the pockets. Because then that gives them time to dry um, before I start putting stuff in them. Because I used to try and glue the pocket on and then stuff something in it. But I usually I always end up either gluing it to the pocket or pulling apart the pocket. So... We'll just do it that way. All right, so we have a pocket there. So now let's go to the second signature and see if we can kind of match up a pocket. So we could kind of put one here. And what do we want right here for the pocket? I don't know if that I, I want pink, but this might work. Let me see what else I have here real quick. Ooh, I kind of like that one there. All right. I'm going to get something to hold my book open. I'm going to trim this down just a hair. And let's see, yeah, that fits better. So we'll go ahead and glue this one. Now, guys, this is not going to be a short video. So if you're one of those people who doesn't like long videos, this one's going to be a long video. So now that we have um, a pocket on the beginning of each signature, I'm going to go to the second part of each signature and find a spot for another pocket. And this looks like an opportune place for a pocket because it still has the um, 
barcode and everything from the back of the paper. So we'll just cover that up. So let's see what we want to cover him up with. I think this one's going to be cute here. Not going to be quite long enough. I cut this one to where it can be a fold open pocket. So that's not going to be long enough for right there. So let's find something else. Like maybe this. I just want to make sure that we get all of that area covered where it's from the barcode. Scoot this over a little bit. And that's going to be close. I might should have trimmed him. We're going to work with it. It's right there on it, but that's okay. It works. Okay. So we have a pocket there. And then we'll go to the second um, half of the second signature and find us another spot for a pocket. Kind of like this spot. And I think this one will work in this spot. But let me look at this one. Because I almost think that this is too much pink for the, all the pink on this page. But if we use this one, let's just fold it and see. See, I always think I'm prepared when I start getting ready to um, decorate a book. And then I find that things don't always work and I have to come up with new ideas. But that's okay. Because that's just part of the process. Okay, we're going to need to trim this a little bit. So let me... I have a pin here somewhere. Sorry about the reach, guys. Uh, I'm going to just trim it right there. Just make a teeny tiny little mark. Okay. Yeah, that works. So we'll go ahead and glue this one down. And you know, guys, I've had a lot of people who've asked me, um, you know, how do you know how much ephemera to put in a book? Or how do you know um, when to stop decorating? And here's my answer to that. My answer to that is, it is your journal. It is your creation. You stop putting, adding things in when you're happy with the book. Whatever that may be. Because it's different for every person. You know, some people are minimalist. They like very simple things, and that's beautiful. And then some people like a lot of stuff. Some people like just absolutely chock-full books, and that's beautiful too. It's just whatever makes you happy is what you need to go with. So, you know, when you're decorating your book and you're flipping through it looking at things, whenever you like the book, stop there whenever you're happy with it. All right, so we've got, I think, four pockets now. So then I have, let me find them. Where did they go? Okay. So I have some children's book page pockets that I wanted to use. I've got some Dick and Jane, and I've got some of the Jerry and Alice. And so I meant to, I think I'm going to, um, I think I want to ink around these. And I think I might want to round the top edges of the pockets. Now when I cut these book pages out they were a little um, you know just not stiff enough and so I backed them onto just some scrap white cardstock that I had. Um, I think I'm going to round these too. And that just made them a little bit stronger so that they would be a little more firm of a pocket. So I'm just going to I'm going to go grab my ink real quick so that we can ink the edges of that. Okay. 
Okay. So I have, I think this is ground espresso. And I just want to go around the edges. Gives it a little bit of um, a more vintage look, but it also just kind of helps it stand out on the page. Doesn't have to be anything fancy here. You know, doesn't have to take you a long time to do it. I just go around the edges and swipe. I love these little Alice and Jerry books. They're super cute. They're very similar to the Dick and Jane books. And actually, Dick and Jane are featured in the Alice and Jerry books. So, just super cute images. I'm very excited to have found this book. This one's going to need a little more because it has a little more color around the edges. So I'm just going to be a little more heavy handed with my ink on the edges of it. Just to make sure that it pops. There. Okay. So now I'm just going to go through the book and see where I want to put... So like in the front signature, I'll put a, an Alice and Jerry and a Dick and Jane pocket. And in the back signature, I will put one of each. <coughs> Sorry guys, I have this, I don't know what it is with the tickle in my throat. Maybe a drink of water will help. Okay, so let's just flip through the book and see where we want the Alice and Jerry pocket. kind of like this page. I like it there. Yeah, I was, I got up one morning and there was something on my printer and it looked like some lady had printed her resume on my printer like five different times and it was my good card stock that was sitting in the printer. I was so irritated about it. So I decided I'm still going to use that card stock. <laughs> So I'm using it for scrap things like this. I don't know if she just picked up my printer on, you know, because it's wireless printer or what, but never heard of her before. So <laughs> I just like to hold my pocket down for a second, especially when it's on, um, you know, like where the book curves, sometimes it doesn't grab good there. So I just want to hold it down for a second and make sure that make sure that it stays good that's another reason why I don't like to immediately put stuff into the pockets okay so let's go find where we want the dick pocket the dick and Jane one I think we'll put it on the second end of the signature and that way it kind of evens it out trying to see where the other pocket was. I don't remember where I put it. Kind of like this spot for it though. Yep, I think we'll put him here. Now this is just the very basics of decorating and then I will go back in once we get all the pockets in then we'll stuff the pockets add a couple of little decorations and we'll be done with the little golden book and it will be ready to go in the Etsy shop for whoever wants it. I'll hold this down for just a second make sure it gets a good a good catch on the glue. So now let's go to the second signature and we'll find a place for a pocket. I just want to see where the other 
pocket is first so I can kind of gauge my distance. So maybe we'll go. Oh, this would be cute to put the Alice and Jerry pocket right here by the garden page. Let's do that. always get entirely too much glue and it smushes out okay so we'll leave that one there and then let's go towards the back of the signature and see where we want to put the Jane pocket the little Dick and Jane pocket so where is Oh, it would have been cute to put this one kind of close to there if I had a let me see if he's playing with his dog anywhere else this is the cutest little little golden book it's so adorable There's another one with the puppy, but that's the last page, and it still doesn't have... Okay, well, we're not going to be able to put it by the puppy, so we're going to put it right here. I don't stress over it too much. If I can make it happen, I will, and if I can't, then we move on along. And that's the thing. When you're decorating a journal, that's the, my biggest struggle is decorating a journal, honestly. It's the, big, it's the hardest thing for me. Um, and I think it, I think that's the case with a lot of people, but the main thing is don't stress over it. Just enjoy the process. Enjoy it and, you know, put in it what your mind tells you to put in it and, um, and sometimes it helps to write it down. Like, um, I'll make a little plan of things that I want in a particular book like this. This is my plan for this little golden book. You know, and I just make me a little list of different things that I want to use in the book. Because as you start going, you sometimes forget, you know, okay, what, what else can I put in here? And it's like, you can get overwhelmed by it. But that's why I make a little list before I get started. And that way, I can look at that list periodically. And it helps me to remember um, some of the things that I wanted to put in the book. Now, I have a couple of these Chenille squares that I got from Selena's shop over at Amore Fabrics. And I wanted to add a couple of Chenille pockets into the book. And I love these because you don't have to do anything to them. They are so pretty um, that they don't need any type of decoration or anything like that. And on a normal basis, I would have sewn these pockets into this book. Just sewn it directly onto the page. Um, but when I made this book, I was kind of making it as a teaching book, and so I didn't, um, I didn't do any of the sewing or anything. So I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to glue him. We're just going to glue him down. So, just like we did the paper pockets. And Aline's works just as good with this. Um, if you have Fabri-Tac, I know a lot of people use Fabri-Tac for their fabric stuff and that's great I think it works great for people I've never used it um, just simply because I'm not willing to spend the money on it but if you have it go for it because it will it will hold it but the Alain's has I've never had a problem with the Alain's so um, it's what I have so it's what I use and I don't See, I'm trying not to use a whole lot, just a really thin line of it. And then we'll just put him down right here. And he'll be, oops, I stuck my fingers in the glue. And he'll be a pretty little pocket. And I like it because even though it has the puffy, it does have the flat part. Like, see, this is, it's fairly flat. You have a little bit of the puff, but 
it's enough for it to grab hold of the page and stay. Me and my glue. <laughs> Okay, so let's go to the second signature and find a spot for the other chenille pocket. Let's see. Oops, still got glue on my fingers. I don't want to be sticking to the pages. I love this page. I think it's so pretty and vibrant, colorful. Just super cool. Okay. So we need a pocket here, so let's not forget. You know what, let's go ahead and put a pocket here because I will forget if I don't do it now. <laughs> and I kind of like this one here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to measure. That way we can cover up that barcode. Trying to make sure that it covers up everything. You can see just a little dab of it right there, but not enough to really draw your attention to it. So I think we're good. All right, so we'll have an extra pocket in this signature, but that's okay. Because we'll go back through the other signature too and just make sure that we have all of the barcodes and everything covered up. So, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking this chenille pocket will look super cute right here with all this blue. So let's put him there. I love these chenille blankets. I would love to have one for my bed. But they are hard to find. They're expensive and the modern day ones are not anywhere near like the one the vintage ones. They're just so much better. As was pretty much everything. <laughs> Alright, so now we have our chenille pockets in. We have our paper pockets in. Now we're going to go back through and I have a couple of the Rita Donnelly flip pockets. I haven't sewn around them, but they're basically, it's the same idea. So let's go and find a spot in the first signature for one of them. I love that. That is so pretty together. Love it. Okay, let's see. We might could put a little color here with the fairies. Let's do this one here. And I try to even it out too and make sure that I'm not putting, you know, like everything in the first part of the signature or everything in the second part of the signature. I try to make it kind of balanced as much as possible. But I don't stress over it if I don't get it there. Okay. Just try and get it on there straight. Me and my wild and crazy glue. Alright, so we got that one there. Let's go to the second signature and find a spot.
That's kind of pretty up against those roses. Let's put it there. And you know, I try to get just a little bit of glue, but it's kind of like making a salad, you know. You just want, when you make a salad, you just can't make a small salad. You wind up with a whole plate full of stuff that you probably can only eat half of it. <laughs> Or I always do, anyway. Taco salad, regular salad, whatever kind of salad. I usually wind up with a big, huge plate full of salad. I'm like, okay, somebody split this with me. <laughs> All right, so we got him in there. And I think it was the second signature that we had um, an extra pocket in. So I forgot I have this pocket. So let me just go look through real quick and make sure we have all of the barcodes covered up and see if I can find where I'll put that extra pocket. I think it's in the second signature, but I just want to be positive. Okay, so see, here's here's a barcode. That needs to be covered up. So we are going to need another pocket here. Ooh, and I think I like this one here. That's super pretty. I love this paper, but I'm going to need to trim it down just a little bit. So now I think we actually have two extra pockets in the second signature, but we will check and make sure. Okay. Now I'm going to squeeze that up against that and rub. Make sure we get a good catch. Okay. Let that dry. I just want to go through here and find any barcodes okay I think no that's not an extra pocket and I'm not going to stress over it if it's not I mean you know if there's one more pocket in one signature than there is the other well oh well <laughs> I'm really not freaking out about it Okay, so the extra pocket is in this signature. I just want to make sure we've got all of our barcodes covered up. And we do in the second signature. Now well, let's check the first signature. Make sure we don't have any showing in this one. thinking there was one more. I know what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to go ahead and put this pocket down and then I'm going to get some washi and put it on this side so that it covers the rest of that barcode. I think that will work. This one's just not quite long enough to cover everything. And with it being a folded piece, you can't, you're not going to be able to refold it and make it work. Okay, so while that's drying, let me grab some washi. And I'm short, so I have to use my ruler to get my washi tub down. <laughs> That's pretty washy, and it looks cute with that pink polka dotted paper, so let's use it. Let's do that. I think I want to cut this straight. To the edge as close to the edge as we can get and just put that washi tape down real good and then take our card here 
and tear. And that gives us a good straight line with our washi when you use the card as a buffer to tear the washi. Okay, that's super cute. I like it. Okay, so now that we have all of our pockets in, I have some envelopes here. Um, and of course, the two children's book page envelopes that I made on video earlier. So let's go ahead and find a spot for our envelopes. So we just flip through. Now y'all, this is the process that I do, so it's just how it works. Let's just go through and flip through and figure out what, what feels good. Whatever feels good, that's where I'm putting it. See, I like this right here for that. And we'll make a paper clip in a minute to go on that. So let's go to the second signature and find a spot for the second envelope. And I think this would be cute with the mother goose. So we can put it there. And we'll make all of our paper clips for our envelopes in just a minute. And then I have this one. Um, this little children's book page is a vintage book. Super cute. And um, I thought I would add it in here. So let's just go to the back of the second signature and find a spot for him or her. However you want to call it. Let's see. I kind of don't lock it up against that paper. But I do lock it up against that paper. Okay, so we'll make our um, paper clip for that in a minute. And then I have these three so we'll go back to the first um, signature and see where we want to put one of those kind of in the back of the signature I think and I think this one would look really cool right there yep that's what we're gonna do okay so now we need to make paper clips for these I usually like to put a little dangle or a little trim or something on them just to make it extra cute so, I think we're going to use small paper clips because these are not really big envelopes. So, um, I have some trims here from my friend Sarah sent me a whole boatload of trims and stuff. So, we're going to try and use these trims. So, let's see. I'm going to sit down for a minute, guys. Sorry. My belly's just screaming at me. Okay. <clears throat> So let's go find our first envelope. Where did we put him? And you don't have to do this process. You know, the, you, your process doesn't have to be like this when you're decorating an envelope. I'm just showing you my process to kind of show you. This is super pretty ribbon in that or trim. Isn't that so sweet? And it's got all different colors in it. I love it. So I think we're going to use that on... Um, maybe a blue paper clip since there's blue in there so let's just do that and I actually think I want some fuzzy trim on it too I think I want some eyelash trim so we're going to mix them I know I was saying something. I don't remember what I was saying because I got sidetracked with the trim. Okay. So let's put that there. I like it. Super cute. Okay. Sit that to the side. Let's go find the other envelopes. I have found that doing it kind of in a process type way like this helps me to make sure that, um, you know, that I don't have everything in the first signature of the book and nothing in the second signature of the book. <laughs> Alright, I know I put another envelope in this signature. Aha, there it is. Okay, so with this one, let's see what kind of trim we have. Use my stapler to hold my page open. We have kind of some bright pinks in here. Let's use this one. This one's super cute. 
I love the glittery, sparkly eyelash trim. My scissors don't want to cut it. And we have, I'm just looking at the colors in the page to figure out what kind of paper clip I want. I almost, you know what, let's just do purple and we'll have all colors of the rainbow in here. I probably should check my camera because I think after a certain amount of time it just cuts off and then I'm sitting here talking, thinking I'm videoing, and then I feel like an idiot when I finally realize that, hello, you're not taping anymore. <laughs> Alright, so we got those two envelopes. Let's find the envelopes in the back. Okay. She's so super cute, but I think I'm going to like a pink paper clip up against her. And I think I'm going to like some of this eyelash trim to go on this paper clip. And then maybe some of the mixed. I love these little golden books. They're so much fun to make. I hope I'm in camera. I'm sitting down so I can't really see what y'all are seeing. So <laughs> maybe I should have did this live so y'all could yell at me and go, hey, we can't see what you're doing. <laughs> Let's see. I know we have one more envelope in here. Okay. So. I like the purple music notes in this one, so let's do a purple, and we'll use, let's see, what else do we have? Ooh, I have some, um, ooh, I like this silver. Okay, I think I'm going to use some of this little silver trim that Sarah sent me. Super cute. So we'll do a piece of that, and then I have some really cute trim in my shop. Let me grab a piece of it. Well, if I can find the end of it. Oh, there we go. So that'll be cute with the purple. We'll just line this up with the silver. I think I got too much. Let me trim some of this off. I don't need that much. That's what I love about the eyelash trim. It's so full that you really don't have to use a whole bunch for it to be super cute. So now we have all of our envelopes <clears throat> and all of our pockets in. So let's just go back through. Let me close these or I'll have paper clips everywhere. But I don't want to close. Let me just check my camera real quick. Make sure I'm still recording. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I should stand back up for a little bit. <laughs> I have to kind of go up and down. All right, so now we're gonna go. Um, I made a fabric flip, and I want one of I want a fabric flip in the book. So let's just go find a cute spot to put the fabric flip. And again, normally I would just sew the fabric flip directly onto the page, um, but again, <clears throat> excuse me, I was using this as a teaching project, and I was just trying to show you guys how to put it together with the. Um, with the buttons on the spine so I think I want to go to the second part of the signature for the fabric flip 
somewhere like right here I like it so since I didn't since I wasn't able to directly sew it onto the page I could use the Alleen's but when it comes to fabric like this I just when I do the fabric flips I just rather use my hot glue gun because then I can stick it down and know it's there to stay and it's not going anywhere and I don't have to hold it forever so we're just going to line it up and press down. Super cute with the little different fabrics and lace on there. So much you can do with that. Alright, so... Okay, sorry about that. My son was telling me bye. Alright, so now... I have these cute little clusters that I made from the offcuts of those little um, book pages that I made the envelopes out of. So we're just going to go through and find a spot in the first signature and the second signature to put us a cute little cluster. Kind of like it there. That's adorable. And I'm trying to decide. I kind of like it on this corner of the page, but I don't want the fabric sticking down from the bottom. So maybe we'll just put it right there. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue underneath the fabric right there so that it holds good okay so and I don't mind it sticking off the page this way so we're just gonna put him right there he's so cute that little mouse is just adorable even though I don't actually like mice I like them in pictures <laughs> that's about it it's about the only way I can deal with them oops so let's go find a spot in the second signature. I kind of like that there. I'm going to put some glue right there on the chenille too just to make sure that I get it held down really good. I probably should put some up underneath here. I always get glue all over me. Look. That's why I keep Paper towels or baby wipes are usually both in my craft room at all times. So, there we go. Okay. So now we're ready to start putting things in pockets. So, um, I'll go through, because we're almost at 45 minutes, so... Maybe we can get it done. If not, I'll do a few and then you can kind of get, you'll kind of get the gist of it. And then um, I'll stop the video and then I'll do a final flip through of it once I get everything in and everything finished. So I'm just trying to pull out my, my clusters. I have a little basket of clusters here. And I like to put a cluster on, on the pockets. So I'm just trying to go through and see. I don't want it to be overwhelming to the pocket, but that one's super cute right there. Even though it kind of clashes with the pink. Let's find something different. Might help if we don't. Wait, that wasn't upside down. <laughs> okay. So I think I like that there, so let's put that there, and then you'll actually have a double pocket on this one. And you don't have to do this with every pocket, 
You know, on one pocket you can just put a little piece of lace or whatever makes you happy. That's my motto. Just do what makes you happy. Because if you stress over it, then it takes away all the fun of crafting and then what's the point? Okay, I'm going to have to get a baby wipe now. I'm really sticky. Hands have glue all over them. Now that we have that there, I think that'll stick pretty good. And I think I think I want to put a playing card in that little pocket. And I've pulled out some playing cards from my stash. And I think I like this one to go in this little pocket. I think that's super cute. Hopefully it won't glue it down. Because <laughs> I'm really bad about that. And then I want to put, I like to add in as many of the scraps or the cutoffs from the papers that I used in the book, I like to add in as many of those as I can for the person who's going to get it. That way they have matching papers to play with in their book. So I think I like this one to go in here. And then we could put a little tag. And I think I want to put something on top of that tag. Maybe some ribbon. I like this color. And that just kind of adds another texture. and another color and a little bit of decoration to your tag. Where'd that go? Okay, so we got one pocket full. And that page is D-U-N done. Okay, and then I added this little um, cut off from the envelope from the book page. So let's just add a little something in there. I have lots of little index cards and um oh i like this one let's do this one i like the way that color goes with that so just pull things from your stash i'm not going to put anything in the envelopes because i like to leave the envelopes empty in the little golden books for the person who gets it so that they can put in there whatever they want to have in there so let's see what else we have up here i have some of these really cute little um children's learning game cards so we'll put one of those in there I usually like to put a couple of things in my pockets and I like this little envelope so let's put this little envelope in here as well super cute and it gives you all different colors I love to mix every different kind of color you can imagine I like to mix them okay so we have the Dick and Jane pocket so I kind of want um, what do I want with the Dick and Jane pocket? Kind of like this. So I think I'll make a Hermelinda tag out of this. So let's do that. I don't know if that's going to be long enough. Because I kind of want a long pocket. Or maybe I could even just do it like this. That's what I'm going to do. Just make it like a little journal piece. And then I'm just going to round the corners just to make it pretty. Of course he's too wide. Let me trim him off a little bit. <laughs> Try again. Okay. There we go. Alright, so we've got that in there. I kind of want something vintagey in this pocket. What do I have? 
I have a bunch of these pretty little tags that my friend sent me. Let's see what we have in here. Tags and journal cards. And I have been super excited about using them, so I'm actually really excited that I'm going to get to use it. Ooh, that one's super cute. I like it. What do y'all think? I like that. Okay, we're going to leave that one. Go to the next one. Now, sometimes I'll put something in the um, clusters, and sometimes I won't. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good grief. Um, I think I want to make a tiny tag out of this. Let's see. There we go. Just a little something to add to it. And then we need something at the top. So let's see. What other kind of trim did Miss Sarah send me? This one's cute. Let's use this one. I always like to put something in the top of my tags. Let me check my time. Yeah, that just kind of adds to the tag. So you kind of get the gist of how I go about the process of decorating my little golden books. So I'm not going to keep you because we're at um, 52 minutes, it looks like. So um, I'm going to move on along and um, go ahead and stop the video here. And then I'll finish it and I'll come back and I'll do a final flip through of... Um, of the journal and then I'll get it put into my Etsy shop so thanks for watching you guys I hope you enjoyed the process I hope I did not bore you to death <laughs> hopefully not but um, yeah if you like the video hit like hit subscribe leave any comments or questions below and thanks for watching you guys have a great day big hugs